guys, how's everyone doing? If you have been watching our prior videos, congratulations. You have made it to the last video on data structures in Cube. So far, among other topics, we have discussed lists and dictionaries. And with this video, we will conclude our introductory video on tables in Cube. So in part one, you learned what tables are and how to create them either by flipping a column dictionary or by using the direct syntax. As a reminder, here's what the syntax looks like. So first you have open parentheses, uh, we'll ignore the brackets for now. Um, then you specify the name of the column, colon, and then the values, and then a semicolon followed by other columns and values that you wanna add. <clears throat> Quite a simple, uh, pretty straightforward syntax. It does take a while to uh, remember uh, all the nitty gritty details, but once you master it, it'll come to you naturally. Now let's look at something interesting. Because tables are flipped column dictionaries, you can retrieve the key value pairs by indexing. So here we're gonna define, create a new table. Uh, we're gonna call it TRD, short for trade. Um, it will have three columns, sim, price, and size, and three rows. So this is what's gonna look like. So Apple, IBM, Microsoft, and their prices and sizes respectively. So here we can just like you would um, retrieve values from lists and dictionaries, you can do something similar with tables. Uh, note that when you do retrieve the first, um, you know, at index zero, you get a dictionary back. So you start with the table, you index it at the zeroth position, and then you get a dictionary back. That's an interesting result. Um, you know, if you were to do a type on that, you can confirm that it is a dictionary. <coughs> And then, you know, you can index it further to get more concrete um, values out. You know, so if you just wanted the same, uh, not the entire sub dictionary, then you can just say the zeroth position and get me the sim, and you'll get, you know, Apple returned. So that's something very interesting uh, that confirms, you know, that tables are really just flipped column dictionaries. Uh, under the hood, they're, they're simply column dictionaries. We can also use the dot notation to retrieve the underlying list of records. So if we just, because our table has three columns, same price and size, we can use the dot notation, trade.price to retrieve the, the list of prices, um, trade.sim to retrieve the list of symbols that we have. Um, if you do a type on that, on that you'll see, <clears throat> because it's a positive value, we see that it's a, um, it's a list. 11 is for symbols, so it's a list of symbols. You, because these are lists, um, you can perform usual queue operation that you would on any other list. So you can do a count on this and you get you know, three back. You can max on the size column, you'll get 30 back. And if you do an average on it, you get 200 back. To reorder columns, you can use X calls keyword. Just specify the columns in the order you like on the left side and the table name on the right side of uh, columns. So we started with three columns in our table, same price, size. We're still gonna get all three back. We're just gonna change the order to having size and price first, and then whatever is left will come after that. So the only column that's left after this is off sim. So we'll have sim as our third column. So if we run this, you'll see we have size, price, and then we have sim. To rename columns, you can use a similarly named keyword, xcall. These two keywords are poorly named, so make sure you pay extra attention to how they differ. X call is used to rename columns. On the left side, you need to specify the new name for columns. So here are our two new names. So remember that trade had sim, price, and size. So we're gonna rename the first column to sim new, and then the second one to price new. Um, it will keep the third column as it is, so it's not gonna remove the third column by just gonna rename the first two. Here you go. So first column gets renamed to same new, second column gets renamed, renamed to price new, and the third column remains the same. Going back to our table, let's see what you can actually do with it. Q has a built-in query language that's known as QSQL. This is one of the main advantages of KDB 
that within one single environment, you have a built-in time series database, a powerful vector language, and a very efficient query language built to specifically query and manipulate time series data. So what are some of the things that you can do with QSQL? If you have any experience with relational databases and its query language, SQL, you will notice a lot of similarities. We'll take a look at four main types of QSQL statements, select, update, insert, and then finally delete. First, let's see how you can do basic selection of the data. A select statement always returns a table. A select statement must contain the words select and from, followed by name of the table. For example, to select entire table, you can use select from trade. So remember, we, we created this table TRD trade, and we want to get all the rows back. So just running TRD will also give you the entire table, or you can say select from trade. That also returns the same table back. To select only certain columns, you can specify the column names after select. So instead of having same price and size returned to us, let's say if we only want sim and price, we would say select sim comma price from trade. If we wanted to reverse the order, we can say select price comma sim from trade. If we wanted to define a new column and select that instead, we will say select sim comma, then the name of the new column, new price, colon, the value, the expression that we want to use to populate that new column. So here we're saying use the value from the column price and add 30 to it and name that column new underscore price. Here you go. So notice now all of our values for price have 30 added to them. More formally, oh, sorry. Uh, if you do not specify the name of the column, Q will try to use uh, its own logic to give it a name here because we are only um, working with the price column. It will try to use the existing name of price and then just update the values there. You don't have to specify uh, a new name for the column, but I, I recommend that you do it just to avoid any confusion. More formally, you can also use the update statement to do the same. You can say update price colon price plus 30 from trade. And it will return you all the columns in the table. Notice that you don't have to specify other columns that you want returned. It will just by default return everything else and only update the column that you want it to update. Many times we only want to select few records from the table instead of the entire table. All of the examples we have shown up until now can be limited to just few records using the where clause. So here, if you want us, if you want to specify um, only symbols that match Apple, we can say select from trade where sim equal Apple, and we only get one row back. We can also use the in keyword to provide a list. So select from trade where sim in Apple or Microsoft. So now you get two rows returned where the sim matches either one of these. You can also say select from trade where price is equal to 200. You can also use the within keyword to provide a start number and end number and anything uh, select anything that falls in between including the including 10 and 20. You can combine two where clauses so you can say select from trade where size is within these two numbers and sim is equal to apple so here we should get only one row back now only this one here is a way to negate to inc to include negatives in a where clause so select sim price press 30 from trade where sim is not equal to ibm You can also use mathematical functions in state statements such as average, max, minimum, first, last, variance, etc. So you can just say select average price from trade. 
you get the value. Note that this would you're getting a table back, not just a single value. <coughs> so you can because it's a, a select statement always returns a table. Then you can do select first sim from trade, you get Apple back. Select variance of size from trade. See here we're not defining the column name, so it's picking the column name by itself. So we were to say or size will get column uh, name modified to or size. What if you wanted to insert records into your table? Since tables are a list of records, you can use comma and a column to insert new records. So here we have our table trade followed by comma, colon, and then a dictionary with one record, NVIDIA with a price of 250 and a size of 25. So if we were to run this, you can see our table now has a new row. We can do this exact same thing without having to specify uh, the column names. We can just provide a list of the values that also adds a new row. Now, here's something interesting. Note that the types of new records have to match the existing types or else you'll get a type error. So if we try to add this row where for price, instead of a numerical value, we have a symbol, we'll get a type error. If we do a meta on the table, you'll see that the price is supposed to be a long. So we can't insert a symbol in there. Now, let's say we create a new table. Here, we're gonna have our only sim and price, and price here has different values. It don't, it's not just numerical. So if we do a meta on that, we'll see that there's no specific type attached to this to this price column. So now we're able to insert rows that are not of the same numerical type. So right now we just added two new rows, one with price as a symbol test and the other one as a as a long 50. You can also use the insert keyword to insert new records. Here we provide the table name, insert keyword, and then the values that we want to add. Note that you have to pass the table name on the left side uh, with a back tick. This is called passing the table by name rather than table by value. And it's gonna, it will change the table uh, that you've been working with. So it will, re, it will update the underlying table It also, once you run it, returns the row where the row number where the new row was added. So, row fifth will contain our new row. So we had only four rows before, and the fifth one is what you inserted. We'll see that the underlying table has changed, and now we have a new row in there. You can also add multiple rows at a time, but the syntax is slightly different. You would think you could just pass a list of records to insert and expect it to work, but that would give you a length error. So if here's you know, a list of records. So you have first list with IBM and the second one with Apple. And if you try to run that, you would get a length error. The right way to do that is using this syntax, where you provide a list of columns instead of a list of rows. Keep that in mind, it can be a little tricky. See, the output is the row number. So you, because you're inserting two rows now, at row six and row seven, that's the output. And this is what the table looks like with the new rows. Finally, if you wanted to delete rows, you can use the delete keyword. The syntax is similar to select statement. So delete from trade where sim is equal to apple will delete the rows with where the sim is equal to apple. So we have two rows with apple the first and the last one, we'll see that they have been removed. If you wanted to delete an entire column, you can do that too. Delete size from trade. So you only have sim and price. And you can add a where clause as well with a restriction that price is not equal to 300. So delete anything where the price is not equal to 300. So you're only left with two rows where the price is equal to 300.
remember that output of a delete statement is always a table that's it for this video guys in this video we showed you how to use select insert update and delete statements to manipulate tables we have now fully covered all the data structures in queue lists dictionaries and tables all of these data structures are extremely important and you must learn them well to be a good kdb developer anyways as always let us know if you have any questions or feedback by leaving us a comment or emailing us at himanshu at enlistq.com.